Happy New Year. I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday. Um, it's good to see everyone in the new year. And um, why don't we just get started? Keep this short and sweet tonight. Um, Roy? If I put it up here. I'm sorry? That was just someone who was unmuted. I just took care of it. Okay. Um, Roy, did you want to get started? Sure, sure. Thanks. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Um, I want to extend a Happy New Year to you all. Hope you had a nice break. I know it was nice for some of us who got to uh, just spend a few moments away from wondering who's going to get COVID and what <laughs> teachers have to be quarantined and all those fun things that we do in education now. But um, Happy New Year. Let's hope for a, a better 2021 for all of us uh, as we as we move forward. Um, just a very quick report tonight. Um, I know Ann will talk about some of the high school COVID stuff, but um, you know, from our from a district perspective, as you were aware, the cases have been on the rise, uh, particularly at the high school um, and in town as well. I, I, you know, the mayor and chief sent out another message today. Um, as of yesterday, I know there were 60 new cases in the last 10 days in the in the village, uh, which is concerning. And just a reminder to all of us that, um, you know. Can't let our guard down, even though it's a new year. The vaccine isn't here totally yet, so we have to remain vigilant as best we can to try to protect each other. <clears throat> um, fortunately for us, the elementary hasn't um, seen an increase in the cases this week. I think there's only four, if I'm not mistaken, that we've learned about. And in the middle school, the same thing. It's been pretty stable, only about, I think, two new cases uh, at the middle school as well. So we've been very fortunate there. Uh, the high school, we're just taking it day by day at the moment. As you know, we're remote this week. We're hoping to get back in person next week, uh, but it will really depend on the data that's coming in by the end of the week where <laughs> we go in. So um, just, again, remain vigilant in what we're doing. But there is help on the way. Um, teachers got notified Monday morning early that they are uh, um, now on the list to become eligible to get vaccinated. Uh, so we did share the link for people to sign up. I can tell you the link got snatched up very quickly. Um, some of us were fortunate enough to get uh, appointments for next week. Others are already pushed out, I think, until March and maybe even April at this point. Um, part, of the, um, part of the challenge I know the county has, because I was on a call Monday morning with George Latimer and others from the uh, Westchester Board of Health, is there not sure how many doses they really get in any given time. Um, that comes from the state and the state doesn't really know because it comes from the federal government. Um, and if we can get more vaccines in, they are prepared to uh, provide more access. But as uh, George Latimer told us, they were expecting 500,000 or so vaccines to come in. Only about 300,000 came in. Um, so it, kind of shortened the window for appointments. Then the next day they got 100,000 they weren't expecting. So it opened up some more appointments. So it really one of those situations where people have to go back and check and uh, hope that something becomes available. But um, our hope is that our staff will get uh, vaccinated as quickly as we can, uh, which will uh, certainly help things. And perhaps by this spring or certainly into the summer, we'll have enough of the population vaccinated to, uh, to move forward away from this pandemic. Um, I did hear an interesting doctor on the radio today, though. He was talking, he's an emergency room doctor, and he was talking about the efficacy of using, of wearing masks. And uh, he was saying that where he works anyway, there were no cases of influenza that reached the emergency room. And by now, because we're really in the middle of the regular flu season, he would see a number of uh, cases at the emergency level, room level from the regular influenza. So he believes that's really directly related to mask wearing. And so, um, you know, we, we should take that to heart and, you know, maybe it's something that will never go away in certain situations, but masks do seem to be effective. Um, so there's that. Uh, we're starting to work on our budget for next year. Um, at the end of January, we do have our budget workshop that is open to the public. I forgot it's a Saturday morning coming up uh, at the end of the month. Um, it's going to be a challenging budget year for next year. We're still um, in a difficult position this year as the state cut 20% of our state aid. I would expect that to continue next year given the state budget deficit. 
um, and the reduced amount of revenue. We're not sure of where the cap will come in yet. Uh, so we're gonna have a challenge with our budget. So we're gonna try to work on things to um, do the best we can moving forward for next year. But that's one of our big pushes now that January's hit is working on next year's budget. So we're gonna look at staffing, enrollments and things like that to uh, see what can be done. Uh, and finally, just an update on the bond. We are making some significant progress. Um, I ran into the foreman uh, from the GC company that's uh, working on it. And we're about a month away from completion, it seems, for everything. Um, he did tell me that uh, I thought the um, counseling suite would be done earlier than I thought, but he told me the floor is set to be put in, I think, February 8th. So that's the last piece of that, but they're sheet rocking now, they're spackling now. So the heat's being turned on this week there. So things are moving along quite nicely. Um, I don't know if you're sure if you had a chance to walk down Meadow, but if you do, you'll see the front of the building on the high school side looks really nice, really pretty. The windows look great, the entrances look great. And I, I think when all is said and done, we'll, done, we'll all be very impressed with the entrance of the high school. Um, I think it's gonna make a significant difference just to the uh, the building itself. So we're looking forward to that as we're starting to wind down and, and being the tail end of the, uh, the bond. Uh, and, then, and the good news, it's really running at or below budget as well. Uh, so we're very happy about that. So that's pretty much it as we start the year. Um, again, just happy new year and, and thanks for the support you continue to give us and we're going to move forward. So thank you. Thanks so much, Roy. Um... And I did. I have to say, I did walk down Meadow the other day, and it does look really good. It was very impressive. I hadn't been that way, I think, in months. So it was quite a shock to see it up there. Um, so well done, um, Anne. You're um, next on the agenda. Sure, I'll I'll echo Roy's comments of a happy New Year. Um, last week, obviously, for my communications, was a bit challenging at the high school given the number of COVID cases. Um, I think at this point we're at 18 in the high school since school started last week. Uh, we were lucky in that very few actually came into the building. Um, and those that did um, were in just a couple of classes. So any contact tracing that's been required from the school's perspective has been done up to this point. And anyone, any student, and their parent would have been contacted if they were in what the Department of Health considers close contact to a positive case. Um, as Roy mentioned, we did of course make the decision this week to go fully remote to slow that spread and really just try to kind of um, take a breath as a high school and hopefully uh, keep people home, keep people safe, including the faculty and so that we can come back again, hopefully next Tuesday to return it to, to the normal in-person classes. Um, just a few other updates. Well, first of all, there is hope on the horizon. I am signed up to get a vaccine Saturday morning. I'm not gonna <laughs> cheer until I actually get it in my arm, but my parents today got their vaccine in Michigan and so did my sister, who's also a transplant recipient. So it was a good day for our family. Um, and so that was that made me feel very hopeful. Uh, so that is good news and it feels good to have faculty being able to sign up and get vaccinated right now. That was great news yesterday morning. It was, I actually didn't realize how much that would raise my spirits, but it was like all of a sudden I thought, oh my God, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So meanwhile, we still do have to follow Department of Health guidelines, even those of us that might get vaccinated earlier. So it's not gonna change the mask wearing or the social distancing, but I think it will allow some of us to just breathe a little easier. Um, tomorrow, we do have a voices assembly. This is something we've done, I think the last nine years. Throughout the year, we have these assemblies where students come forward and decide to speak to the school about an experience, a meaningful experience in their life. Um, we were gonna do this virtually anyway. Now um, everyone's virtual. It will actually be streamed on YouTube. And so tomorrow I'll actually send the link out to everyone, parents and students. We've never done that before. It's usually 
just a high school assembly, but um, of students. But since we're all remote and I thought, you know, maybe some parents would like to see what this is. Um, I'll share that. So that'll get streamed on YouTube. It's taking place around 1050 in the morning. The next thing coming up on our schedule is the midterm exams, which are the last week in January. I just sent an email about that today. Not everyone is giving one. Um, just so you know, we do have some semester courses that are ending. So there are actually some final exams that take place during this time period. Um, some teachers have moved to giving projects. Some teachers are giving exams. This is gonna be fully remote. So what does that mean? That means students will log into Zoom we will have proctors, and then the exam will be distributed electronically. A number of faculty have been giving exams this way this year, and I'll just mention a couple of things. Um, many of the exams that are being given are things like an essay, um, short answer in an essay. Many of them are open notes. So these aren't your typical sit down, fill in multiple choice necessarily. The teachers are, are aware of the format of the test and have made adjustments accordingly. Um, so your the best thing uh, to figure out what the schedule would be for your child is have your child, you know, class by class, understand from their teachers what the plan is. Guidance counselors can be helpful as well, but you received the schedule. Um, so there will be some free time that week. We, we do not have classes those four days. But there are also projects due and some things that need to be finished up for the quarter. So that's the purpose of that week. Um, the last thing I'll mention is just that, you know, we continue to get updates from the College Board about advanced placement courses. The College Board is telling us they're not cutting any content this year off the test, which is, I can't believe, but that's what they're saying. Um, I just met with our AP teachers this morning. They feel very confident students will be prepared. In the meantime, they're not trying to bury kids in work given the, the um, stress students are under already right now. But uh, we are keeping in constant contact with the AP teachers and if needed towards the end of April, we'll be just doing some review sessions for AP students if there are any units that are gonna end up on the exam that teachers haven't covered in depth or tested students on. So we have a plan, the plan is going well and we have a backup plan. So we're well prepared. These are experienced AP teachers and I think um, we'll be fine going into the spring. That's it for me. I'll take any questions if anyone has any. Thank you, Anne. Actually, um, someone did have a question for me that I couldn't answer um, earlier this week with respect to the contact tracing. Is mm -hmm. it just with, is it just with um, other children and teachers in that class, or if there are extracurriculars that they're involved in, are those um, students also contacted as well? Yeah. So what we do is we usually talk to the student. We know their schedule. We know when they were in the building, but we want to make sure were they in any common spaces. We do have the QR codes in the cafeteria and the library and all of those places, but it's also good just to say to the student, where were you? We check if, um, obviously, if they're on a sports team, that comes into play as well. So it's just an open dialogue um, with anyone that we need to do contact tracing for, and everyone's been very forthcoming. Again, just to keep everyone safe, that's the point. So we get information and then we act upon it. Okay. And do you want to mention about the QR codes too in the rooms? Sure. So we do have some common spaces um, where students may sit, let's say, to um, if their teacher is out but can still teach, um, like the blue gym, the cafeteria, the library, and the learning commons. And when students sit at those spaces, on the table is a QR code that they scan so that we have a record of who was in which common spaces at what time every day. So should we need to go back to that, we actually are able to do so. Again, we tend to do that and speak to the student about where they were located and it's a good triangulation. Okay, thanks so much. Um, if no one has any other questions, then next is Erin Yeah, Good evening, everybody. Um, I echo the you know, happy uh, new year wishes and, and
hope everybody's doing well. It's nice to see some of you uh, that were on the call last night here again. Here we are. Um, just uh, while a lot of uh, the discussion is about coronavirus and contact tracing, the counseling department pushes on with the uh, sort of typical high school schedule, um, which means that the juniors um, are now meeting with their counselor to talk about classes and start some post high school planning. Uh, so if you have a junior student, you should have received uh, a invitation, uh, both in the mail and in the email to uh, meet your child's counselor. We also, um, on the heels of a few challenge success meetings, the students and uh, Ann and I thought it would be wise to have teachers speak to the, to the, to the class about the courses they're able to take for the following year. So we've been doing that for the past few years. And this year, uh, one of the beauties of you know everything virtual, we were able to record it. So on our YouTube page is the junior class recording. Um, and on February 5th, we will meet with the sophomores and the sophomore recording will be available. And on March 5th, we will meet with the freshmen and that recording will also be available. And those, um, following those dates is when the meetings start with the different grade levels. Um, so you should hear something from our department or your child's and or your child's counselor following those uh, two, two dates for the uh, sophomores and freshmen. And then if you happen to straddle multiple schools, we're actually also meeting with eighth grade parents um, and students later in March. Uh, March 24th is the eighth and ninth grade transition meeting. Um, Following uh, that, some other events, and I know this was on the email, but I'll just worth mentioning, we postponed the sophomore parent evening to February 9th. Um, we just, the department needed a little bit more time to uh, sort of iterate the previous versions of that event um, because it was no longer really applicable to the kind of way in which school has been going for sophomores, given that about a year and a half of it has been virtual. Um, so we are working on, on planning a new event and that'll be uh, held on February 9th. Following February break, we are going to be starting uh, uh, kind of a, a new series of sophomore workshops. We're still very much in the planning phase, um, but working a lot around the sort of theme for sophomore year of kind of finding your passion and, and exploring some of your interests and tying that into your course selection uh, possibly some summer opportunities if, if a student is interested in doing something like that, um, you know, possibly on a college campus or just virtually uh, through a college. Um, and so we will be pushing into both English and history classes following the February break. Um, and then I think lastly on my list here is for the junior parents, we now with the juniors, I think in late November into December for our junior workshop series, which we started early this year, uh, the topics involved Naviance and also, um, you know, kind of college fit and some um, great resources that we shared with you, but obviously that we were sharing with the, with the students about really flushing out what their, what criteria they're looking for from a college versus starting with a college name and then figuring out if their grades and test scores match that profile. We're really um, asking and encouraging and, and having students take kind of meticulous time thinking about the criteria and the factors and whether or not they fit with that specific college that they may, be, may or may not be interested in. So those were that was the scope of the first three meetings. Following the February break, we're gonna go back into um, those sessions and get more into the nitty gritty common app planning for college um, and kind of round out that workshop into the third quarter. Um, and I think I, I skipped the seniors, but for those of you that have seniors, you know, most of their college applications should be in. Maybe there's a few that are due on Friday. Um, most of the results are in for early decision. There's some early action schools out there lingering that we should hear back this month and, and we're hoping for some good news. And, um, and, and I guess following that, really everybody should start hearing in late March, early April from uh, regular decision. That's all. <laughs> Thank you so much.
Aaron, yeah. congratulations to all the seniors who got in um, ED and EA already. It's, I know it's a uh, weight off their minds. Um, so there was um, one question that got answered via chat um, in case anyone else was interested um, in it while Aaron was speaking. Someone had asked when the date for graduation was and that's um, scheduled for June 19th. So just FYI, if in, ca in case anyone was interested. Um, next on the agenda, we have Joe Haven um, speaking about um, sports. Good evening, everybody. Happy New Year. Nice to see everybody. Um, just a few updates on sports. As you know, we've been in a big pause. Um, we just we just learned um, this weekend that indoor track may be taking a hit. Um, the armory where you run indoor track is now being converted, and they'll be giving out the vaccines at the in, at the uh, armory. So now the league and the section are trying to determine how we're going to run indoor track. Obviously, it'll be done outdoors, but we're trying to figure out what's going to happen for all the athletes and how we're going to do it. Um, meets meets to become virtual, just like swimming's going to become virtual. The same might happen for our for our um, indoor track meets that will be held. So we'll host a an event at our school with just our athletes, then we'll compare times with other schools afterwards. Um, we're really just trying to get to a point where kids are doing something. Um, we may not be competing at the same location, but we will be competing at the same time. That's still up in the air, but that is something brand new news to us. Um, you know, taking a shot at one of our programs we're offering, but hopefully uh, we'll get the opportunity for kids to do something still at the high school level at indoor track. Um, one thing that's very excited is Athletic Council, um, is pleased to announce that we're continuing with our branding project. So uh, within the next week or two, the new branding will be um, installed in the cardio room and in the weight room. Uh, and it's been a, a two year project and they're doing a great job with that. So uh, big signs will be in um, after school hours and they will be installing um, and completing some more of the branding that we're looking to have done. Um, in the next three days, We'll have meetings league-wide and section-wide to determine what's going to happen with the high-risk sports that have not been allowed to participate yet. So currently, we in high risk, we have football, we have basketball, um, we have hockey, and boys lacrosse. Um, so we're trying to come up with some ideas. There's been three proposals out. They're going to set through proposals and then send them to the schools, and the schools will vote to determine which way section one will go uh, with sports basically for the high risk winter and uh, fall too, and then high risk spring. Um, but we're trying to find opportunities for everybody to participate. One proposal is students could play more than one sport during the same season. Um, that's not getting a lot of traction, but just having opportunities for our athletes to participate um, is what we're trying to get. And we might have, there may be some overlap in seasons which never happened before where children may have to choose between basketball and, and football say, um, but we're trying to make it so that that way uh, we can get kids opportunities. And obviously what we're waiting for is approval from the state level, which comes from the governor first. And that's what we're waiting for, um, for approval for the high risk sports. And like I said, right now, the high risk sports are the ones that are indoors. For modified, I'll just let you know if you're modified children for modified, um, right now, the only sport that is being offered for modified is indoor track. Same issues with uh, the varsity level. Um, so we're not sure we're going to do with that. There's only five schools from our conference that, that are interested in having an indoor track. So hopefully, um, we'll be able to find something for our children to do. And myself and Dave Russert will be working just to come up with some kind of um, program after school for our middle school athletes, but that's still in the process of seeing what can happen. We can determine that so we can bring children into the gym safely, similar to what the outdoor program we had, but with obviously a lot less children participating at the same time. Okay, a couple of questions on the chat. Um, Joe, apparently one parent suggested that a school in Connecticut set up a mini golf course in the gym. A very welcomed diversion. Is that an option um, at Bronxville for either the weekends or after school? You're muted, Joe. All right, there we go. I do know that um, obviously we're going to lack comparisons with New Jersey and Connecticut. Um, and I will say, our we do have people, um, higher level people. We have some actually some, some assemblymen trying to get to the state office, trying to get our student athletes the opportunity to participate. Um, truthfully, that's way above the athletic director level. That's really at the governor's level. Um, everybody 
in Section 1 athletics, uh, including the state representatives for the, for the uh, Public High School Athletic Association, are trying to get athletics to come on, on board. Obviously, though, we're just waiting for approval from the governor to say, yes, you can do it. Um, when the governor gives us an okay, we'll be ready, ready to go, and we'll be prepared to go once that happens. Um, it's very interesting to see how many proposals are out there. But the great thing is the individual sports chair people who are in charge of planning have very some of them have four and five plans ready to go. So as soon as the governor gives the go, depending upon where we are um, on the calendar, we'll be able to put our play um, our plan in place immediately. Thank you. Um, another question for you, Anne, regarding graduation. Will parents be invited? Uh, I can't answer that question. What I can tell you is I have about seven different ways graduation <laughs> can happen based on last year, all over the campus with parents and without, including seating charts. So similar to what Joe just said, I've got all the plans ready to go and whatever we're told, we will make happen. Obviously, the priority is to get parents at graduation for sure. But uh, and we, we have explored a lot of different things in the last year, so we're ready to go. Well, and parents nice. weren't necessarily invited last year, but they showed up anyway, so there's that. <laughs> we're very persistent parents. Um, okay, thank you for that. So um, we're going to run through our various grade chairs right now. Um, ninth grade, do you have anything to report? Uh, yes, good evening and a happy new year. Um, the gifts that was sent to um, Andres, uh was very well received and uh, the students are talking to them about organizing another event for Valentine's Day. So when the detail is finalized, I will send out an email on that for the ninth grade. Oh, and I also heard congratulations that the um, ninth grade did their elections as well. So yes. congratulations to all the, um, the elected officials in the ninth grade. Um, 10th grade, anything to share? I think I saw Sarah on here. If not, um, my understanding is that for seventh, for 10th grade, sorry, um, the Veterans Day, the Veterans Drive with, over the holidays was a big success. So thank you for everyone who contributed to that. And I, Aaron mentioned this already, but the other thing I had flagged was that the counseling meeting that was scheduled for, I believe, last week has been pushed back to February. And as a result, this is something that um, Aaron and I spoke about earlier this week. There are usually um, suggestions for the teachers um, with respect to placement for the next year. Um, that in the, what's that page called? Um, yeah, so actually, thank you for the gentle reminder. So um, in, in both student and parent infinite campus pages or screens, um, in their portal, there are recommendations by uh, current teachers for next year's classes. Uh, so if you have a junior, they're definitely there for juniors. Uh, we told the faculty that the sophomores and the ninth graders, uh, their meetings are until much later. So they might not be as accurate if you have maybe two kids in the high school or uh, underclassmen. But um, in your parent view, if you just, uh, once you sign in, if you click on more, it brings you to just more options. And one of them is course requests. And you can see uh, what's been recommended um, or hasn't yet been recommended in that section of Infinite Campus. Both student and parent uh, can see that. Okay, thank you. Um, 11th grade. Okay, for the 11th grade, um, my understanding is they have sold out of their current order of um, face masks. So thank you for everyone who ordered face masks. They are waiting for another, um, I guess, shipment to come in. And once that comes in, then they'll be distributed. So everyone anxiously awaiting your new face masks. Those will be forthcoming soon. Um, 12th grade. Um, Michelle, are you there? Yeah, I'm here now. <laughs> um, we don't have too much to report. Uh, we had a hot chocolate and cookie bar for all the seniors uh, to celebrate getting all their applications in and they seem to like that. Um, and then we've booked uh, Wednesday, May 26th for the mom prom and the pop hop. And um, with any luck that will take place, but we're ready if, um, you know, if it happens. 
And that's it for now. So what were the dates again? Well, we're going to send an email out with like all the dates. And so that, that'll help too. What, what Michelle? It again? Was, yeah, May 26th was the date for the mom prom and the pop hop. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, those are the um, grade chairs. Thank you for the updates. Um, next, we have Juan Jericchio from the Bronxville Foundation. Um, giving us an update. Thank you, Margaret. Thanks for allowing me to give a brief update um, and update this group on foundation news. Perhaps the most interesting way to kind of provide a quick update is to describe what we've been able to fund um, and implement. Uh, recently, um, and the largest of last year's grants was the funding of the Design and Innovation Center at the high school. Um, and this was a grant that was requested by the administration uh, because uh, in connection with the construction, they we ran, um, we ran out. <laughs> so um, Roy brought uh, this proposal and Ann brought this proposal to the foundation and we were thrilled to be able to have the funds and enable um, the funding of the center. Um, I wanted to, um, or I, I intended to kind of just, um, play the video, but Anne's already put it up on the district website. Um, it's a two and a half minute video that's basically um, gives the viewer an idea of the type of technology in the space and the space for collaboration that the center provides. And the students featured on the video were working with robotics and were designing and manufacturing prototypes on 3D printers all of the, which wouldn't even be possible last year. So it's really, really interesting. And if um, everyone has an opportunity, please do take a look. Um, also this year over the summer, the foundation was able to provide funding um, for uh, items like pure zone antibacterial coverings throughout the three schools, as well as um, equip the classroom technology uh, equip the classrooms with the technology they needed for the hybrid learning and the Zoom classrooms. And these were um, critical and uh, back to school needs that uh, the foundation was able to assist um, the school putting into place. Um, and when I say the foundation is granted, what I really mean is that uh, all the generous donors in this, on this call has provided, um, basically the foundation can't do anything without um, the generosity of the school community. So um, as I must do every time I speak, I would love to uh, put in a plug um, for any um, members of the community who haven't donated yet, please do so. Um, your support is needed more than ever. Um, as Roy had discussed, the um, district is anticipating some um, cuts in state funding and, uh, and the other uncertainties that um, accompany our short-term future at least. Um, so please do uh, donate. And um, I'd like to also announce that this year's annual grant cycle is open. So teachers, students, parents, and community members, they're the ones that come up with all these great ideas. We simply get to read them and vote and fund them. So um, please do. Um, take a look at the website. Uh, if you, it's a, there's a very easy to complete application. And if you have a great idea or um, your student has a great idea, we'd love to um, have you go ahead and fill out an application and submit. Uh, they're due on March 1st. Um, and basically the March 1st is the due date. Votes occur in May um, and are approved. And if they're approved, um, funding is as available as early as July 1st. So literally you can get something in place and funded by fall, um, which is one thing that we're really excited about. Um, and lastly, if anybody on the Zoom has any desire to become involved with the foundation, we are kicking off um, uh, kind of the annual solicitation for nominations for our foundation board members. Um, a press release is going to be going out for self nominations or nominating uh, those that you think would be great members for the foundation um, in my hometown Bronxville shortly. Uh, but I, what I 
do want to um, clarify is that the foundation board tries to keep a good balance of representatives of all three schools and community members. Um, so there is a designated nominating committee um, who has a pipeline of potential board members and manages the balance on an annual basis. Um, so if anyone is, I mean, everyone is invited to put in their name if they have interest, um, but we just ask that um, there's an understanding that there may be a time lag between when interest is expressed and when a spot becomes available for your, um, you know, for your age child within the board and, and um, the requirements of the board balance. So that I try to do as quickly as possible, but uh, that is, that is um, what I need. Uh, or wanted to share about the foundation. If anyone's got questions, please let me know. Okay, thanks so much, Juan. Okay. And really, thank you for everything that the foundation does. It's really, I mean, it really fills in all the gaps. I don't think the school will be able to do everything that it does um, at, as effectively um, without the foundation. So it's wonderful. It's, and it's so great to see how the community pulls together to, yeah. um, to make it happen. So thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Um, next we have, um, bold. I know I saw Neve. Yeah. Hi, I'm Neve and, uh, it's good to see everybody. And it's great to hear that the teachers will soon be getting their vaccinations. And that really is a game changer. Um, for those of us who work in education and it gives us peace of mind. So it's great to see that. Um, so I just want to say that we were supposed to have a meeting in, in February 3rd. We just have to reschedule that uh, to a later date, um, but our next, our meeting will be sometime in February and our focus will be on executive functioning and uh, we will have someone in the school speak about that. Really to um, let people know we're here to support our parents. And if any of you are interested in joining the Bold Committee, we're always looking for parents to join us and be part of our discussions. And um, we, you know, we meet with Dr. Kelly monthly and um, it, we're just getting great support from the school supporting our initiatives. And so we would just always welcome anyone with any suggestions or ideas to join us. And um, that would be great. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Neve. Uh, next, we have, B I'm pretty sure I saw Jen, one of the Jens um, on the call, Be Well. I know you had your all school read last night. Um, neither one of you on? Okay, unfortunately, I was not able to attend. I got sucked into um, Taekwondo driving. So um, <laughs> I can't report on how it went. So we will hear about it. Next I can report real quick that it went really well. And Aaron, oh, thank you. you. Go ahead, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, I think it went really well. There was a strong showing of parents that um, are coming together to, uh, I guess, put it bluntly, learn how to raise an adult, uh, which was the title of the book. Uh, I see some other parents that were on the call. Uh, for the purposes of the sort of intimate and um, vulnerable discussion we have, we did not record it, but um, it was great. Dr. Mara Kecki, our director of curriculum, led the discussion. And, and really, uh, there were some faculty members there who I can't list right now, but, and there was a few of them, but um, it was really, we were there just to help uh, kind of uh, facilitate discussion. Um, and the parents really did most of the driving. And I think uh, we had some breakout rooms and we talked a little bit more in depth about you know ways in which we are uh, you know, putting away our children's clothes or cutting their steak or, you know, um, charging their iPads and how we can sort of step away um, and, and give them an opportunity to build, uh, you know, their uh, efficacy as it relates to small things like I just mentioned and then ultimately bigger things like advocacy in the classroom and, and with their counselor and teachers and, and definitely in their homes. So, uh, you can still get the book and read it. Um, I'm sure some of us on the call would be happy to, to say more, uh, maybe, you know, at another time, but it was great. Great, thank you for that. Where Michelle. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say, I'm looking at me and Michelle, if they have something else to say, and I know they were there, um, yeah, feel free, but. It was actually really well done. And I, I thank the faculty for taking the time to kind of facilitate the conversation. It was good to sort of hear stories and compare notes especially the book in light of COVID. So maybe more chores doing COVID and 
maybe more reflection about some of these issues. So I thought it was great. And there was a good conversation about how to maybe continue something like this as a resource for parents. So thanks again to the faculty for doing it. Okay. Um, thank you. And I was really bummed to have missed that. I was actually really looking forward to it. Um, is Christine Tormi on the line um, for the Youth Council update? I don't think I saw her. Okay, if not, um, just to let you know that the um, Youth Council has been packing bag, um, lunch bags for Feeding Westchester and that's been going well. There was, um, they were wrapping presents over the holidays um, for, for West Hab as well. And I remember there was a large gift collection. So thank you to everyone who um, contributed gifts to be distributed. Um, via West Hab. That there is also a very popular um, after school Zoom um, with packed, like pre packed bags of arts and crafts um, or games. And then apparently the, um, the high school students Zoom with um, the elementary school students and they, um, they meet once a month um, to, to have a Zoom meeting. And um, that's been incredibly well received. I, apparently, there um, it's like practically a two to one ratio of high school students to elementary school students. The high school students are enjoying it so much. So thank you to everyone who's contributing to that. And then um, if anyone is interested or if anyone's children are interested in um, getting involved in youth council, there's the contact information for, for David Russert is on the um, agenda. And apparently there's a Google classroom code link um, that you can go on to see on um, the events that are coming up. So you can participate as well. And that is all that's currently on the agenda. Just a reminder, um, the, next, the next meeting is going to be on February 5th. And um, then everything, all the other dates are really, you know, good things. Martin Luther King, school is closed. <laughs> There's midterms. And then um, the change of quarter is on the 29th. Um, right after on the last day of midterms. So thank you everyone for joining. Are there any other questions or comments that people wanted to share before, before we close it out? No, okay. Well, happy new year again. Thank you for taking time to join us in this new year. It was so great to see everyone and we will see you next month. Take care, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.